to the Broadwater Farm Estate because I want to learn about a really notorious British born yardie who lived on this estate and he used methods which were almost straight out of a yardie textbook. Mark Lambie's story mirrors the story of the rise of violent street crime in the UK. He began as a small-time drug dealer. At the tender age of 21, he became head of the Tottenham Mandem crew, a violent gang of drug dealers. That's when he came to the attention of Detective Chief Inspector Peter Lansdowne of the Metropolitan Police. His criminality was quite spontaneous. They could be out on a social function, um, literally step on somebody's shoes and end up in a shootout. While on routine surveillance, Lansdowne's team followed Lambie and a convoy of gang members into the estate, unaware that it was the start of a series of events that would lead to Lambie's downfall. In the early evening, it's getting dark. It's very difficult for, for the surveillance officers to actually see what's going on. The, the gang came down here into the underground car park. We didn't actually know what they were doing down here. Robbing other drug dealers was a classic Yardie tactic. Now, Lambie, a British-born criminal, was about to use that same tactic on two Yardie drug dealers. These two fellas turned up here in, in a nice blue Mazda sports car and were set upon by the gang. Approximately 10 people, mainly armed with handguns, jumped out, beat them, um, assorted them and put them in the boots of, of two of the cars. The police, unaware of what had just happened, followed the two cars carrying the bound and gagged Jamaicans to a nearby estate. The two Jamaicans, Morris and Smith, had been dragged up to the flat at number 49 uh, and taken in there to be tortured. Lambie uh, allegedly was demanding £20,000 in money and or drugs from the two victims. The victims were taken in, were, were led upstairs in the kitchen, you, you can see the hammer that was used to, to hammer the toes of one of the victims. One had a kettle of boiling water poured over his genitals and another one was ironed with an electric iron. You can see some of the blood on the bottom of the radiator there. It was everyday business for, for Lambie. It was extortion, drugs money, stealing cash from individuals. Lambie and his gang began to target innocent victims. They forced their way into the address and ransacked it. They attacked the, the two girls who lived there, their children, were, were tied up with gaffer tape, laid on the floor, and basically stripped of their possessions of watches and jewelry. The gang lost control at this point. They were attacking people like a pack of hyenas. Within seconds, I'd resurrected the whole operation, and, and we'd scrambled out to try and find Lambie and his associates somewhere in the Tottenham area. It was to prove to be the beginning of the end for Lambie and his gang. Through the streets of North London, police chased the car carrying Lambie's henchmen and drugs stolen from the two Jamaican dealers, Smith and Morris. The vehicle came down Stony Road here, clipped the curb and flicked up onto its roof and crashed. And a quarter of a kilo of heroin fell from the vehicle and burst across the road. Lambie started phoning Morris and Smith and made demands uh, to the effect that a quarter of a kilo of heroin had been recovered by the police and Morris and Smith owed him £5,000 in lieu of that drugs and that if they didn't come up with the money that they or their family would be killed. With Lambie's gang behind bars, police soon swooped on Lambie himself. Lambie was sentenced to 12 years for kidnap and torture. But that's not the end of the story for Broadwater Farm and inner 